Okay, you probably know me. I work at CSCS, as is that mean. I'm the manager of the storage part that is not the scratch part, but it's the main part where we store all the project stuff. So what I want to show you is something about the cache, something that last year IBM showed us here at the HPC advisory was Kalyan Gunda, one of the developer. And so in April 2012, last year, came up the GPFS 3.5. And so I tried to go through the active file management, that is exactly the cache, and see if what Kalyan said last year was true or not. So here I report a few few points that are the main points where the AFM works on the new feature that you can find on the GPFS 3.5. Because the AFM works on the snapsh on the file set level. And I add also the snapshot part because it's something that we can use with the AFM to make something that is not reported by IBM, but we can use GPFS to do also this work. It's a kind of dirty work, but it works. It, you can do it. I will show you later. And going, this is what IBM said in the manual about the AFM. So what is really the active file management? It's a scalable high performance caching layer that it's integrated in GPFS. So uh, this is true. The second point is they say that we can create an association between GPFS cluster, defining a location and flow about the file data. This is true, but it's not complete, because you can create relation between, class, between file systems that are not only GPFS, because the AFM is based on the NFS protocol. So basically, the source could be an NFS, which file system you want. So it's not really strict to the GPFS. The GPFS should be the cache layer. The cache part should be a GPFS, because you need the AFM part to, be in, to create the link between the two file systems. And then the really nice part that is the last point is yeah, where it's clear that you create a new uh, namespace. This means that the cache is exactly a file system. This is another important point for the last slide that I have, where it's clear that you can use AFM not only to cache data, but to move data across file, many kind of file system. So, this is more or less the idea of the AFM. You should be able to use your namespace, your GPFS, or which file system you want, all around the world. You can have your home cluster, that means the source for the AFM. For example, I don't know, somewhere in, in America, somewhere, I don't know what, where you want. Then you use a link between US and Europe or Africa, where you want. This link could be which one you want, because we don't really care about the kind of link you have. Should be quite stable, but a standard link, which one you want. Because here, the main point is that we don't really care about the latency. That is the main issue in this kind of design. Uh, so the GPFS on cluster should be the um, where you want to preserve your data in the safe way. So where you have the backup or, I don't know, where you have your, you can have the HSM or everything you want. Then there is the remote cluster, GPFS, where you need the GPFS 3.5 because, as I told before, the home cluster could be another file system. So you don't need the 3.5 here. But here, yes, you need because here you have the AFM that works for you. So the remote cache should be a GPFS. And the wide area network, it's a link. If you have a dedicated link, really high speed link, a standard internet connection, we don't care. Because the AFM, when you started, you have done the first, uh, let's say, sync, with, at least with the inodes part. You are OK. You can work in a disconnected mode if you are writing something new. Obviously, if you need to read something that is not already cached, okay, you need the network and you need the speed of this link. 
So depending on the use you want to do about the FM, you have to care about this link. Otherwise, it works. So, uh, you miss one slide. Okay, should be another slide between these two. And it's a slide I sent you, probably the last version. Yeah, anyway, it's not a big deal. What I miss here in this presentation is the list of the mode that you can use to define the AFM. Uh, right now, it's possible to define the AFM as a single writer. That means that you can cache the data from, the, from one GPFS to the other one, but the data that are uh, valid, so uh, that you have to use to write and read uh, the data in, that are located on, on the remote cache. So if you write here and you, have, you are using the single mode writer mode, so all the changes you are doing here are propagated to this one, but you are not allowed on the home cluster to do anything on the file. Otherwise, you waste the inode information. Sure, you can list, you can read, but not modify anything because any any changes you do on the remote will overwrite the data you have at home. This is a huge limitation. And so what an example could be this one. You have a one. Here, out of the slide, you will have your source cluster. Then there is a link that should be an NFS link. And it's, uh, you have to define the export on the source. And then you do all the work about the Client, NFS client is, is done by GPFS remote cluster. I typically suggest to use three servers just to have a good quorum on the GPFS, a good stability, because if you have three clusters, it means you have a failover on the disk part. So if you lose one of these three servers, you are okay, and the GPFS remote is okay. It never dies. Otherwise, you have to take care of the, obviously, the quorum and everything. You can create a remote cluster with one server. It works, but it's not stable. It's not what you can say reliable. And then you can play as you want. You have a file system. So if you want to export like an NFS, uh, CIFs, or you can use GPFS, and you export exactly the cache that practically is a file set. It's nothing more than a file set. It's a group, it's a file set with an independent uh, inode space. So when you create this cache, you create a new file system. And then you are, you are able, if you disconnect this link, to use this cache as a, as a file system, as a standard copy of the data you have to home. And which is the main difference between the cache and the multi-cluster? Because GPFS is allowing us to use the multi-cluster, so you can have your data all around the world using the, the link, the standard link. The main difference is, is, is it clear? For example, I, I was running a Bonny test here. The first test was run on a GPFS multi-cluster, a standard one. This means that each operation you do on the remote cluster it's automatically in a synchronous way is done down to home. So this means that you are going through the latency of the link. So AFM is working as a normal GPFS. So all the work you do on the GPFS that is working as AFM is working as a local, a local GPFS. And you see the big difference you have on this operation, on the random seek. This is amazing. You are at home and you are working on data, I don't know, 100 kilometers far from you. It's, it's fantastic. So, as I told you at the beginning, let's go back here. I said all these features from GPFS 3.5, because if you combine those the snapshot, an independent file set, okay, and those three are more than, we don't need this for this operation. We can do this. So we can have a generic file system, and we decide to move out from this file system and move to a GPFS uh, because we want to be more reliable, I don't know. We like to go to a GPFS. So you, 
uh, you create the NFS mount, and then a GPFS, could be remote, could be in the same site, you don't need anything special. And then you create here the EFM layer, and then you simply create the link, the file set, then you ask to GPFS to fetch all the data. It's, you cannot use the policy in this case if you have a generic file system, because to use the, the policy you need to create the list of the file in the GPFS language. So you, you are unable to do without the policy, but you, you can run a simple uh, copy or a simple uh, find on the file. So you have all the data copied here on the cache. When everything is done, you remove the link and you have all the data that are in this file system. It is not the GPFS, and the GPFS at the end. It's a simple operation to migrate data, for example. So, going through what I showed, I'm going quite fast, but mm, what is great that you can feel at home when you are really far from your home and you can work on your data, also if you have 100 kilometers or more between you and your real data because you have a local cache. So you reduce the cost because you don't need to uh, preserve the data of the cache like the real data you have at home because all the backup, all the layer, all this is admin can be a, at home. You don't need a second, second copy of everything up to where you have the, the cache. Uh, I don't know, it's a um, really nice feature, a, way, a new way to migrate the data. You don't need a strange software or strange things to move everything out from any file system when you, if you want to move this to GPFS. Obviously, you have a bottleneck that is the NFS protocol. This is not uh, what you can say parallel. So you have to pass through one link because you have to define a gateway between the GPFS and the file system. This is the mount, the, the NFS mount. So this is a bottleneck. But at the end, if you can schedule that you want a large number of files for that day, you can uh, schedule the prefetch during the night and when you need is over there. So it's a bottleneck, but you can play around to skip the delay you have. There is a big missing, a big lack. This is the multi-writer mode. It's a nice feature, it's fantastic, but typically you are not the only one that you're supposed to use this file system. So you cannot mount the same file system, the same mount point from multiple sites. This is a, not a good thing, but you, IBM saying that they are working, it's on the roadmap, so we are waiting. For the moment it's not out, but should be in 3.5 something in a subversion. So I have to say thank you to my colleague Davide that was working with me on this test and to Kali Angunda that was the presenter that was here last year. He's a developer of this part of GPFS and I was really in touch with him because the first time we ran the pilot project we had a lot of issues but he was really fast in, and he solved more or less everything because it's not really use this feature, I don't know, probably the IBMers know better than me, but this is a feature that was on Sonas before, and now they introduced this on uh, GPFS. So this was designed for Sonas, and when we start to use on a standard Linux, we found a lot of bugs, let's say this, but they were, they were really fast and they solved it. Now we are in another bug, it's a nice bug, but it's out of GPFS, it's an NFS bug. So we are working with Red Hat trying to solve this. So that's it. If you have questions. Yeah. So interruption, what consequence it has? That's a good question. You can operate in a disconnected mode. If you want to write, you have no problem. And when the connector comes up again, GPFS will do the work to synchronize it. home. It's doing like an R-Sync. It's really an R-Sync. It's going to ask to the source, the file they have, that, so it's kind of recrustation of the list of the file that or GPFS already sent to home, and then they do the diff, and then it's a, an R-Sync at the end. It's completely transparent for the user. Obviously, if you are going to ask something, you want to read something that is not on the cache, you receive a zero file. So 
this is a problem, but it's, it's not God, so you cannot do or read something that is not on the cache. If you want to be sure to have these on the cache, you can prefetch. You set the policy, you want to be sure to have this part on the cache, that you prefetch. The suggestion here is design the cache to be able to host all the data you want to for the daily work on the remote side. If you're able to design the cache to host all the data that you need in that part of the day, you are mostly okay, you can operate without any connection to home. And when you have the connection, you start the synchronization. It's completely transparent, you have to do anything. exactly the reply I got from Kalyan last year, because this feature was on the 3.4 in an hidden way. So I was trying, because he told me that the commands were there, so I was trying this, and my question was exactly this to him. So what I can do? Yes, you can mount and drive the users to use one part to write, one part to read, and then you can, it works. But you have to use the read only on the cache mode, and multi not multi the standard multi-cluster, to write. Yeah, it's, a, it's exactly that, yeah, the solution. But it's not comfort, comfortable. Because if you have to ask to the user to run a script and modify the script to read somewhere, write somewhere, for sure they are going to wrong something, make something wrong, and they will write something on the wrong path, and they will waste everything. And then they come to you asking for the backup. But, yeah. Uh, standards uh, NFS connection. So for the moment, they didn't introduce the PNFS part. When they are, will introduce the PNFS, there is a, a branch of IBM in the lab so that are working on it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So whatever, how do we put but for what I know, they are working to introduce the PNFS to do exactly this because you have GPFS that is parallel and you are limited by the NFS, it's not parallel. So. As they start to use the PNFS, probably they are able to yeah. connect through multiple nodes. You have the cluster. The link makes more sense than to have. Yeah, and the problem to have one link uh, is if you have a problem on the, the node of the cluster where you set the export, the NFS export, you may have problem because you are not connecting anymore. 